everybody my name is analytical plum and welcome back to my channel we are finally finally at the end now of bridgerton we are going to be watching the last episode in today's video and i am scared i am excited i'm nervous basically feeling a bit of everything at the moment i just want to say a quick thank you to anyone who has watched any of my videos but if there's anyone who watched the whole Bridgerton series with me. It has been such an incredible journey and let's just skip straight into it. But before we begin, I would love if you would consider subscribing. I do post twice a week, but don't hold me to that. And if you love my reaction videos or if you love Bridgerton, I would love if you would leave a like. It does help me out a ton. And without further ado, let's say goodbye to Penelope and Colin's story. morning is it though is it really your husband slept on the settee on your wedding night is it really a good morning <laughs> i am off to bridgeton house for breakfast but my mother is coming you do not have to leave i wish to i understand i understand it's understandable but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt and i'm not appreciating colin right now at the end of the day you have to remember that the one he loves wrote nasty things about him and his family so Whew. Good morning, Mama. Cressida. No, leave. Are you kidding me? The morning after their wedding, she comes tromping in. The audacity. I'm simply paying a visit to the esteemed Lady Whistledown. What? Whatever you think you know, you're incorrect. No one would ever suspect you, as you are so very forgettable. Really? I was really starting to like Cressida. I thought, yes, brilliant. This is her redemption arc. She's gonna improve and she's gonna actually be a decent person. But I feel like I just got absolutely debated. I thought Eloise would be good for her, but it turns out Eloise was a horrible friend to her and she's probably worse than she was before. I'm not happy. You're leaving town? Yes, but not to my Aunt Joanna's house. You are going to pay me double the Queen's reward so that I might set up my life abroad. No, no, <laughs> really? Just, oh, can I just jump in the screen and like rip out her bow or something? I don't know. She makes me feel violent. Or I will tell everyone of your true identity. No one would believe you. Your reputation could not be any lower at present. Yeah, that's true. Who would believe Cressida at this point? She went around saying that she was Lady Whistledown and she was completely wrong. And now she's going to say somebody else is Whistledown? Who would honestly believe that? Think of your daughter's love of the written word. She is the true Lady Whistledown. You will pay me my sum. She's really trying it. She's really trying it. Oh, I don't know if Lady Featherington is going to believe Cressida or not because she was the one who was like, Cressida? Lady Whistledown? Ugh. You know, but is she actually gonna think about it? I don't know. Do I have to continue? I'm so worried. <laughs> tell me it is not true. It's not true? I mean, you told me to tell you that, so ugh. <laughs> Cressida does not lie. Now I realize what a fool I have been. All the terrible things you've written about your sisters. Which was quite deserving, I might add. And even she said in the last, was it last episode or the one before that, how horrible they've all been. Proper well deserved. I have fought with every tool at my disposal to claw us out of ruin. My own blood has been sowing the seeds of our ruin. How could you, Penelope? Okay, any good relationship between them has just absolutely soured. I can dip my Doritos in that. It'll be a nice topping. God's sake, Cressida. Does your husband know? Unfortunately. He cannot know about this latest scandal. He would have grounds for an annulment. He must tell Colin. Correct me if I'm wrong. My history people gather around, right? But I thought that during these times, the only way for a marriage to be annulled was if there was incompetency in the bedroom, you know what I mean. Or the other one I think is if somebody committed adultery. I don't know, maybe I'm completely wrong. That's what I thought about this era. Carly won't get an annulment, no way. Her Majesty has been quite forthcoming with accusation. I was wondering how we would come around to that. Yeah, she has been quite reckless a bit, isn't she? That there's not been much proof 
of anybody being Lady Whistledown and then she just dives in head first. Like with the last episode, she just waltzed into the wedding and accused all the Bridgertons, well one of them, of being Lady Whistledown. <laughs> I'd say get undeniable proof and then dive in. No, it was no accusation. It is the truth. I am closer to finding Lady Whistledown than ever before. Oh, is she gonna find out Penelope's Lady Whistledown? Probably. I hope not, but probably. It has become evident that there is a vulnerability there, a certain grasping to find herself. Do you in fact know who Whistledown is? Does she? She probably does. I think Lady Danbury is a very, very smart lady. And she is very observant herself. So I think, I don't know, I think she definitely knows, or has a suspicion at least. Perhaps Lady Whistledown is not trying to beat you at your own game. Perhaps she is merely trying to stay in the game. That is probably music to the Queen's ears. <laughs> Oh, well, you no longer sneeze, Albie. The warm weather we've been having. There's a nervous sneeze quelled by our happy marital bliss. Do you know what? He is the smoothest out of everyone. Like, sod Anthony, sod Colin. It's him who is the smoothest out of everyone. <laughs> Philippa and I are going to host a ball centred on the colour purple. And we can have bugs! Well, now, this is going to be interesting. But bugs? What sort of bugs? Is she talking about, like, butterflies? I love butterflies. Are you sure we should be in public? The Queen knows about your engagement now. She thinks one of us is whistled down. Don't it just seem so exhausting? The only thing I could really relate this to, because I don't go outside, is social media if you were to post. And you just got a lot of eyes on you and anyone can comment. Like, imagine being a celebrity, I could not. Like if there's one small tiny thing you do wrong or if you're having a bad day, that's it. That's the only stamp that you would have for the rest of your life probably. We are out like any other family having ice cream. Very inconspicuous. <laughs> John and I are going to apply for a special license so that we can have a simple, small ceremony at home. To avoid any further bluster. That is genuinely such a them sort of wedding. That's what I was saying before, that I think them having a small little gathering is definitely a them thing. Do you know what? I think small private ceremonies are very underrated. You save so much money. <laughs> and I assume your Oxfordshire estate cannot be more than a day's ride away? I guess not. We should like to take residence at John's primary estate. In Scotland? Close to the border. Uh, no. Poor Myla. She's about to combust. You know what? I think she was a bit hesitant at the beginning, but the more she dives into this wedding with them, the more she's just, like, about to implode. It's okay. It's time for your baby to spread her wings. <clears throat> How are you? Trying not to think about yesterday. I'm hoping you're not talking about the whole wedding, just the part where the Queen walked in. Also, while I'm here, I forgot to say in my last video that the I thought the wedding was a slight bit underwhelming, because usually it's a big spectacle in the series, but we just saw a bit of the ceremony, and then, you know, the whole bit with the breakfast, and then that was it. I thought it was going to be a bit more. What are you doing here? I, um, I was not expecting to see you until later this afternoon. She knows, Colin, you don't have to hide your eye. Oh my god, things are happening so quickly. Oh my god, give me time to breathe. <laughs> we were just having a nice chit chat and now everyone's storming in. Who knows that she's Lady Whistledown. Oh my god. So glad to see the whole of Mayfair seem to know before your own mother. Cressida had discovered my secret. She demands £10,000 to keep it. You cannot be serious. Right, now's the time to build a Protect Penelope squad, right? Put a hit out on Cressida's head. <laughs> Spread rumours, you know, foment the fact that Cressida's a lying bitch. <laughs> If she knows, we must prevent her from revealing it. That's what I said. It will besmirch our Bridgerton name, and I will not stand for anyone blackmailing my wife. Oh, that is certainly a relief to hear. <laughs> I'm getting such a whiplash. First of all, Colin, that was nasty that you shot Penelope down and won't let her have a choice. Nasty. <laughs> Do you know what? I think Lady Featherington will just be happy with the fact that Colin still calls her his wife. She's over the moon by that. That's all she wants. I can pay her. You have made that higher sum. Slightly more, if we're being honest. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you think that Colin's not gonna like this? Because he was already quite intimidated by the fact that she was a successful writer. I think he might be even more annoyed with the fact that, you know, she's 
got a lot of money on our own. You're not paying Miss Carper a single penny. Then perhaps you will pay. No one is paying her. And what do you propose we do? Hit squad. See, if I could just throw myself into this universe, I think I'd solve about 10% of all of their issues. It is the only way forward. I'm a bit annoyed that Colleen ain't letting Penelope speak. I know that he's annoyed at her. That's understandable, as we've established. But it's still a bit of a douchey move not to let her talk. I thought he was going to be a nice husband. I take it your mother does not know about your blackmailing my wife? I no longer trust anyone but myself. Yep, and that was a lesson that her mum taught her, so. I know I said to use it, but I didn't mean it in this way. They keep mixing up my words. You must feel terribly lonely. Mm -hmm. I have known what it's like to be truly alone. Seeing the great sights of the world as only a man can do. Mm. To be fair, yeah, that is a bit of a privileged take, isn't it? Being able to travel but complaining about feeling lonely. I mean, it's absolutely fair. He's allowed to feel, you know, how he feels. He's allowed to feel lonely. But <laughs> saying this to somebody who's on the brink of ruin and about to have everything stripped away from her, I just think it's a bit of a, a naive take. Bit of a privileged take. I found myself yearning to hear word from home, from Penelope, but I did not hear back from her. I mean, to be fair, you were a bit of an ass before you left. I can understand why you might hate Whistledown. Her words are cutting. You do not sound as if you hate Whistledown. I think he hates the f the concept of a bit of writing being able just to absolutely turn somebody's life over and completely ruin it. He still definitely loves Penelope, but he's cautious about her power. It sounds a bit odd. I'm trying to like say it. My words always come across as really wrong, but she can be a little reckless. She has admitted it in the past. I, I just think he worries about Penelope. I think that's what comes down to it. Penelope, imagine being so ignored. You feel invisible. It's true, but he's preaching to the wrong person here, I think, because she was the leading cause of Penelope's struggles. <laughs> but perhaps it is understandable that at times her column has reflected the cruelty around her. See, I like that. That is good. And she did not savage you in her latest column. That's what Misa been saying. If even Penelope can find grace for you, the ton will forgive you. Surely your father will welcome you back to London. Think again. He may be the wrong person to be talking to Cressida. That is also a bit of a naive take. It's one of the things that I see reoccurring. People, when they grow up in such a nice family, they don't believe that family could do wrong or they'll say, oh, but it's family and think you should just forgive them when something happens. But Cressida's dad will not forgive Cressida because that's that's just the type of person he is. We've already seen before he was quite abusive towards Cressida's mum, so he's not just going to suddenly let up. And in that regard, I do feel sorry for Cressida because it seems like she don't have a choice. I mean, she don't. You take for granted that you will always have your family's support. We are not the same, Mr. Bridgerton. Perhaps I am not asking for enough from you. No! No! At least my sisters will be content when my actions lead to destruction. Perhaps we might aim a little higher with our positive thinking. Colin can be remarkably compelling when he wants to be. Well, about that. I think you might need more positivity than you think. It really did not go well. Did you truly like her? Or did you befriend her simply to punish me? I'm not so petty. Really? Really? I'm afraid I have failed. She wants double now. £20,000. She requires you use your column to restore her reputation. This is gonna sound really, really stupid, but hear me out a second. Could they not take this to the Queen? Penelope doesn't have to admit she's Lady Whistledown, but they could say that Cressida is making up stories to try and pass the blame over to restore her name and she's blackmailing and asking for money. Is, is that not a possibility or is that, you know, out of the Queen's jurisdiction? Penelope was right. It would have been better to just pay her. I have the funds. We will keep her identity shielded. I wonder why Colin won't let Penelope use her money. Do you do you think there's some small part of him that wants her to keep it because that's her hard-earned money? Or do you think that this is some sort of protecting, like, I'll pay for you kind of, I don't know, mannerism? I don't really know the right word for that. I am certain the Kappa girl only wants you to write a few glowing words. It is not a happy outcome. I should not have expected any more from Cressida. Is it a bit bad to say that I quite like this little squad? <laughs>
I don't know, I really like it. Go team, go squad. Francesca seems to have found an inner courage. And now she is using it to get as far away from her mother as possible. Mm. She's turning this into a bit of a targeted attack to herself. I promise, it's not necessarily you she wants to get away from. You will have my support in Francesca's absence and also my brother's. Uh, we do not have to discuss that. But perhaps we should. I think we should. Francesca and John are about to get married. So they said they were going to wait till after they get married to talk about it. I know Violet is most likely scared. And that's completely understandable. But I also think she's kind of running away. Like she's trying to put the focus on her kids. Rather than trying to help herself out every now and again. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But sometimes you've got to you know, have a bit of self-love. It is not as though I asked your permission. We talking about this? Wait, I didn't expect this. Wait, what? You know, I know my father was a good man and that you have been a very good friend and that is all I need to know. It's about time, I suppose. If you aren't quite sure what they're talking about in Queen Charlotte, it was revealed that Violet's dad had an affair with Lady Danbury after Lord Danbury passed away. So, yeah, they, they kind of, Violet kind of found out because there was a mutual activity of building birthday crowns and her dad made Lady Danbury a crown. So, yeah, bit awkward. <laughs> but if he sours things between the two of you, I will <laughs> pick you over him. <laughs> the crown. That's the crown that I was just telling you about. How do you stand society events? Love for a bit of chit chat, especially party of three. He's really loving this. I've probably cut it out because, you know, timing reasons, but every time Benedict has popped up in this episode, all he has been doing is rolling around the sheets, not literally, but rolling around the sheets with those two. He hasn't stopped. <laughs> I don't know how he's gonna stop it if I'm honest. Are you gonna say something? I only need a blanket for the setting. Well, that's not what I meant. Oh, come on. We've only got like, what, 40 minutes left of this episode? You need to make up eventually. I'm going to have tea with my mother before your sister's wedding. I would spare you the confines of a shared carriage. Where was my happy wedding? I know I had a big list of demands, right? But surely I thought this was the most reasonable one out of everything. <laughs> oh, it's Penelope here. I cannot put him off any longer, ma'am. That solicitor is here. But I don't think there's much that could have changed from last time, is there? Because the thing that he was waiting for was a male heir for the Featheringtons to be born. But they aren't any closer to giving birth, so what could change? Or maybe this is an update on the forgery. <gasps> no. <laughs> Please be good news. I need good news. I have not come on happy business. Some have told me they do find release from deception a comforting feeling. No. Please tell me this is just a red herring and there's something else going on. No. I thought it quite curious that you came into such a fortune. Aunt Petunia's neighbours seem to agree with me. Who's to say she was not a great saver? Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's something, but... That... No. The Featherington title should be transferred. I should be submitting my discoveries to the royal authorities. Ah. Seriously. Seriously. And Penelope's just found everything out. Oh my god, this is just not going well. Do you think, right, this may just be completely out of the nowhere as well, but do you think with all of the money Penelope got that she's going to give some to her mum or maybe all of it because maybe Lady Whistledown will end up sour like that's the situation of Lady Whistledown and she want to give everything away like in a way where she doesn't feel like she deserves the money if that makes sense she might give that small fortune of hers to her mother i don't know maybe this is random you stole from them uh, you humiliated them what you and i have done is not different um yeah it is quite a bit different i did what i had to do to protect this family who were you protecting with your column myself oh from whom 
to be fair, whatever she says, or would have said in that moment, Lady Featherington would have taken it the same way. Sometimes you can't reason with the unreasonable. And when people are heightened, no matter what you're saying, they're going to turn it back against you. And even if I do not like what you have written over the years, it is a great regret of mine that I've overlooked you for so long. Is that just for the money? I'm unsure. This one of the things I kept saying about Lady Featherington was that even though a lot of the choices she makes are very very bad ones at the end of the day everything she has done was to protect her family also mainly herself but a lot of the times to protect her daughters because what she's saying is true she doesn't really have any power so the only thing she can do have to be sly or she has to do you know cut certain corners and I'm not excusing her behavior but what much can she do? Put the Lady Whistledown right when I am exposed. Oh no. She will write whatever I like her to. What a thing you have made for yourself. Oh, I love this. Don't make me cry. This is, I know it's a really bad moment, but this is also so sweet. I love their relationship. Well, what it's turned into, not what it was at the beginning. Ah, uh, she looks so good. Anthony and Kate are headed for India. But you have spent so much time away from us already, in Bath, well, on your own when you are home. She really is struggling with the fact that Francesca's leaving. Bless her. Also, Anthony and Kate have already left. Was that our goodbye to them this season? I hope not. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see the baby. And Edwina. I want to see Edwina. The silence and beauty of Scotland will allow me to know myself better, so that you can all know me better as well. It must be difficult being a house with like so many siblings and servants. I don't feel like I can breathe in a house of like five plus people. I could definitely relate to Francesca. Being with John in his estate will definitely give her the chance to get to know herself and spread her wings. And I'm happy for her. When I first met your father, barely speak my own name. John it is a fine man and a good choice. Yay! Oh, I love a good episode. Everything gets settled and everything is just you know, comes to it a lovely soft end. I thought that th that is what love must be like for everyone. Forceful, quick. Forceful? That doesn't sound very nice. But you have shown me that there is another way, that there is beauty in the slow approach. See, this is why I think it's a good thing that she waited before diving headfirst with Marcus. Because I think there's a lot of self-reflection that Lady Bridgeton needs to be doing and I think she's starting to do it and open up and, you know, in a way, stop clinging to her past and adventure forward. I take thee to be my lawful wedded wife. Oh. May you now live together in holy matrimony until your dying breath. What was that face? Is she okay? Or is she just uncomfortable having her first kiss in front of her whole family? Because that would be a bit uncomfy, wouldn't it? Now that I am wed, mother's attention may turn to you again. Unless she is distracting you. <laughs> it's next season. Gotta be Eloise's. I mean, uh, <laughs> we'll have to see at the end of the season what happens. Because at the moment, I don't see Eloise settling down with somebody else. So, I don't know, maybe they'll pull out a miracle. It was a beautiful ceremony. I thought so. Mm -hmm. Second only to the beauty of its hostess. Oh my god, you are smooth. Everyone's been so smooth. This is just a show of butter. Save a dance for me at the next ball. Doug with Finch Ball, I... <laughs> yes. Yes! That, that would be most adequate. Very good. <laughs> I would love to see this. Please show me it. I have not the words to express my adoration. I shall offer a few humble words to your family. I feel like this is going to be the most we've ever heard him speak in this whole season. <laughs> uh, he is a lovely talker, so I'm not against that. Keep talking, John. In this moment, when I feel so much gratitude for my new wife, I feel it in equal measure for the remarkable woman who raised her. Hey, Violet is going to come out of this wedding just blushing. Everyone's complimenting her so much. Good, she deserves all the compliments. May I speak with you? Oh. 
can you please make up now? We're now on the 30 minute mark. There needs to be something. I cannot ask you to lie to your brother on my behalf. They are too good, too warm and wonderful to deceive or cheat in any way. One of two options. She's either going to pay Cressida or, you know that thing people do when they're blackmailed and they come out themselves so they could do it on their own terms. Do you think Penelope's going to tell everyone that she's Lady Whistledown herself before Cressida has a chance to. I don't like that fault. You've given me so much already. You've taught me to hold my own. It is not what you do for me that makes me love you. Come on. Give in, Colin. Just love Penelope, please. How much you care. Just being you is enough, Colin. Now Penelope's the smooth talker. I need there to be like a Bridgerton school of how smooth to talk. Because I definitely need me some of that. <laughs> as long as you live with this secret, there will always be something between us. I know. Well, what are you going to do, Penelope? Perhaps that is the key. What are you saying? She's going to reveal herself. She is. The Queen's going to just come marching straight to her house. Oh. God. A letter for you, your majesty. I know I said about taking it to the queen, but this is not what I meant. Is that money? Is that meant to be all of her money? Well, some of her money. They look like Monopoly notes. <laughs> what was that for her mum? What's happening? It is no wonder she's turned out the way she has. The house is far too warm. You're right, sister. It is my wife's doing. So I see it runs in the family. Good to know. I'm not going anywhere with her. You have no choice. You would truly allow me to succumb to such a fate. I mean, I'm all about, you know, supporting your kids. But in this instance, is there anything she can do? She's as much under Cressida's dad's thumb as Cressida is herself. I was hoping it could just be the two of us tonight. Have you not enjoyed having Paul with us? <laughs> Are you missing a bit of something, Benedict? I am beginning to care for you, Benedict. Oh. More than friends. Your abundance of love. I have never met someone so similar to me. Now, how is this going to turn out? I'm not even sure. I don't... I, I, I don't know what's going on with Benedict. What if we did allow things to grow more serious between us? You are extraordinary. But no? But... I'm not certain that Sirius is what I want. This is what I said originally about Benedict. I didn't see this situation as something long term. I just thought it was something for him to occupy his time while he still thinks about what he wants to do with his life. I mean, maybe we'll see that by the end of this episode. He'll figure something out. Hopefully he gets back into art. Still hoping through Paul because Paul's got to step in with the arts. I mean, I know it's with theatre, I believe, so it's a bit different to art, but I mean, it's something. I don't know, maybe he can paint the settings for the theatre. <laughs> it's made me realise how good it feels to be free. You've opened my world, and I'm not ready to close it again. So that does not sound like a Benedict season next season. <laughs> I support your wishes. Even merriment can grow tiring. It felt good for once to want to commit to someone. I do have to say I've been loving this communication. This is what we need. I'm sick of miscommunication or not communicating at all. All of this niceness and communicating. I love it. It's healthy. <laughs> Fancy finding you here. Oh, we're back here again. Hmm, where is it you wish you were going? Well, for now, I'd like to be with the family until this whistle-down business with the Queen bows over. Benedict and Eloise are so similar. And I think that's why they get on so well. I think they both feel a bit lost in their own different ways. That it connects them. If I'm going to attempt to make change in the world, certainly I shall need to see some of it first. I thought you were more interested in fitting in. I think I am properly done with all of that. So, she needs to do a bit of travelling either next season and we'll be out of London or before the next season like you know kind of like what Colin did or she meets somebody who wants to do the same it feels right now that the next thing I might learn may change me entirely oh what do you mean what do you mean <laughs> what do you what do you mean <laughs> We should not let so long pass again between us. We meet on these swings to be entirely confused together. 
I agree with that. I miss their little bonding times. But also, stepping back, what do you mean? I'm trying to get a hint at whose season is going to be the next season. And I'm flip-flopping between Eloise and Benedict. But I don't know. Maybe both. I mean, they did Francesca's and Collins and Penelope's and John's all in the same go. So why not? My efforts will be wasted knowing the disappointment that awaits behind those doors. Oh, wow. This is where Penelope's money went. Oh, she's so sweet. Did we get them? We got them. <laughs> the bugs? You cut them all like a child receiving their first bite of cake. <laughs> that must have been you. Who paid for all of this? Penelope did. Uh, Mama told me she wished for you to have the greatest ball Mayfair has ever seen. After seeing the grandeur of this party, I think Lady Featherington wants to have her own little column. <laughs> she'll probably help. She could be a little conspirator with Penelope. Where's Colin? Penelope seems to be all on her own. And all the Bridgertons actually, where are they? Your Majesty! Forgive us, Your Majesty! We did not think you would accept our invitation. Is Penelope gonna tell everyone at this ball that she's Lady Whistledown? Wait, no. What's happening? Seriously, what is she planning? It is not your invitation that brings me here. She's playing. Oh, dearie me. I'm scared. As a result of my tireless search, I received a letter asking to address you all herself. No way. Is she actually... <laughs> no. To plead her case publicly, so I turn the floor over now. <laughs> Why do you make me jump like that? Her. She knew. She definitely knew. At least she looked fabulous. It is no laughing matter what I have done. In the beginning, I never thought anyone would take my writing seriously. Oh, so did she let... Violet no before doing all of this so she wasn't as shocked. That was a smart move. Why should they? No one has ever taken any part of me seriously. <laughs> oh, Penelope. And in writing about all of you, I suddenly felt as if I had a life. And for anyone in this room who has ever had a taste of that, they should know it can be intoxicating. So how is this going to impact Cressida? Because Cressida was holding this over Penelope to get the money so she can escape. So does that mean she's just going to go off with her aunt? Or do you think Penelope's going to try and help her? Because as she's saying, ladies don't have much power or much responsibility that's not the right word but much control over their own lives so maybe she will sympathize with what Cressida is doing and try and help her out but i was careless with that power a little bit but i see now how much courage it takes to live a life out in the open regardless of the outcome one always has worth oh colin is so proud of her look at him i think colin has definitely had a bit of a hand with penelope as she keeps saying he helped her with so much self-confidence and belief this season oh no i'm just hoping i'm hoping that the queen doesn't have a harsh punishment a harsh punishment a harsh punishment for penelope I mean, maybe the Queen sympathises because that's how her position as Queen came about because she didn't have a choice. Maybe she'll sympathise with Penelope. Who knows? I'm hoping so. That is why I am so very grateful to our Queen for forcing me out of the shadows with her most cunning scheme. I mean to aim my quill more responsibly. That is very smart. I'll applaud Penelope for that. Buttering up the Queen. Very good idea. She seems humbled, but we will be watching that she remains so. Is that good news? What is life without a little gossip? I think the Queen massively related to Penelope, and that's why she's not as fast. She definitely saw herself in Penelope's words. Oh, that was such a good outcome! Now, Barney! The bugs! Oh, I love you, Philippa! Oh, it looks so good! I didn't know there were going to be butterflies! Like I said, bugs! You are a genius! I'm gonna miss these two! No, this is so bittersweet! <laughs> that was well deserved! Her Majesty was close when Whistledown was a Bridgerton, but I know the family well enough to know it was not one of them. Hey! Penelope is the Bridgerton. But I see what she means. <laughs> you knew it was me. 
I suspect it. You are not the only lady of the town who can keep a secret. That's what I've been saying. She's so smart and observant. Who else would know? You're a wonder. I could not have done that without your support. We can now tell that solicitor your money came from my writing. Time for us to do better. <gasps> See, it's all sliding together. Isn't this just so satisfying? Come on, give her a kiss. Thank you for your letter. I do not believe I've seen my mother so quickly shocked. <laughs> and also, so quickly impressed. I think it's because everyone can relate. Everyone is in a really similar situation, as in, like, women. And, you know, us women got to stick together. There is something I left out of that letter. But I would not object to an annulment if you requested one. No, you better say no. Your letters have always been the ones I'm most eager to read. <laughs> it's because they're so good. You have always had one voice. There is no separating you from Whistledown. It's about time you learned this. Well, I would not want to, because forgive me, but that was bloody brilliant. Yes, it bloody was. I have been envious of you. You don't say. I could see that from a mile away. <laughs> that a woman with such bravery loves me. How lucky I am to stand by your side. Oh no, this is so sweet. I love you. I love you. I love you both. Wait, but where Violet and Marcus? Oh, I see them. Okay, I'm fulfilled. I'm happy. Oh, Eloise. She probably feels so lonely right now. I've come up with a rather brilliant idea. Let me accompany you to Scotland. <gasps> I simply wish to live for a little while outside our tiny bubble. I think that is an absolutely brilliant idea. I went to like just the outskirts of Scotland before and it was so beautiful. And thankfully my cousin has finally arrived. Michaela Sterling. Hello. And you must be? I, I am Francesca Bridgerton Kilmartin. Is she, is she okay? Uh, uh, oh, is she nervous? I'm a little confused, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. My reticence is not due to a desire to protect any risque couplings. Why did you have to say that at the moment you're being risque, Lady Whistledown? <laughs> you knew what you were doing. All those who feel they have been wrong, my sincere apologies. Bye, Cressida. I will miss you. Only until next year. Do you think Mama would ever let me miss her masquerade ball? See, moral of the story, all I had to do was be patient. And then I'll find out that Eloise is going to travel like Colin did. She will hopefully have some development with all of this travel. But I suppose we'll see. It is time now to look toward the future, whatever it may bring. Benedict season and Eloise season. Are we going to have them both? Knows better than to make any predictions about what the future may hold. I feel like I just got well called out. <laughs> that was not very fair. Oh, I hope you have fun, Eloise. This is a well-deserved moment for her. So it is with the heaviest heart that I write this final sentence as Lady Whistledown. Final? Is she not doing it anymore? It's going to be so weird having Bridgerton without the Whistledown column. You're the He's the most handsome of them all. Squeeze. Three babies. So Penelope was pregnant. I still cannot fully believe you had a boy. The new Lord Featherington is quite handsome. <laughs> I called it. I called this too. Are you telling me the sisters had girls? I just think this is karma for everything they've done. <laughs> I'm glad we had daughters. I think little Philomena will one day become a great writer. Oh. Oh, this is too cute. Well, it certainly runs in the family. I could not have written my book without the help of Philomena's auntie Penelope. I oh, did it. Oh, that's so great. As we begin this next part of our journey, yours truly, Penelope Bridgerton. No. Why do I feel so emotional? And with that brings the end of my reaction to season three of Bridgerton. I have thoroughly enjoyed this series. There are still a few things where I'm a bit confused. Like Lord Dan, what, what's his name? Seems me so long I forgot it. Lord Debling. Lord Debling just disappeared, but wasn't his whole intention to find a partner? I still don't see why he didn't go with Cressida in the end. They seem to have bonded quite well towards the end, so I don't know. I'm quite happy with 
how everything turned out. I'm uh, slightly confused about uh, Francesca towards the end because I don't know if she had a few doubts or she was a bit nervous to go and spread her wings but she seemed a bit hesitant so I'm not quite sure what that's about. And yeah apart from what I said earlier I thought the wedding was quite quick and usually it's bigger or well, in my opinion yeah. I'm excited for the next one. Again, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my reaction. Comment down below anything that you wanted to inform me, of course. I do love your comments and your theories about who is going to be the lead for the next season. And apart from that, I will see you in my next video.